get a bus or go by car in various cars and the whole group would go off and we'd have a tour and uh, a look and a chat and tea and of course I was very very odd I was obviously the youngest member of this entourage and uh, I was kind of pulled along sometimes by the ear sometimes by the hand but I went and I never objected very much to going I mean I could have gone out and played cowboys out in the backyard if I felt like it but somehow or other I did both I first got to know Dysert when I was teaching art in Thomastown Vocational School and I asked my students of any point of interest in their locality and one of them said, oh yes, uh, Dysert Castle is the place where Bishop Barclay, the philosopher, was born. I decided that I'd go and have a look at it and much to my surprise I, f I found the most beautiful valley in Ireland secluded by the river, surrounded by ancient oak trees with nature at its best, grown over with ferns, wild and colourful and I used this as a base for a number of years to come and think, and contemplate and uh, use for ideas. It had probably been inhabited by the Miletians, the Tuatha Danann, the early Christians, the Normans, the Tudors in the end, and right up to the present time. And Barclay would have lived there in the 17th century and spent his early uh, youth there and probably formulated the philosophies which he developed later in life to become one of the major philosophers of the world and certainly Ireland's most famous one. Barclay's philosophy was very, very interesting in the sense that it was uh, an immaterialist philosophy. You actually had to perceive it to know it existed. So if you didn't think about it and if you didn't perceive it, you didn't sense it, it wasn't there. The woods of Dysert are laced with old medieval paths and very, very ancient pathways. When I first saw Dysart Castle, I perceived it through the woods. When I came up close to it, I had to fight my way through uh, nettles to enter, and still in summertime you have to do that here. A number of years after I first discovered Dysart, the owner decided he was going to sell the property and discontinue farming. So it went on the market, and I purchased it. Well, I, I find the place very, very special, not just for Barclay. It in itself has something which enlivens the soul and activates the mind. Here is, is some place you can come and think, and indeed lots of people come to think here. When I walk through these woods, I feel connected to the earth. I feel the growth that's there. I feel the breeze through the, through the leaves and the trees. I smell the river, I smell the moss, and monsters there. When I first came to Dyson, I did some uh, sketches and studies of the structure of the castle. Uh, and these later developed into much more broad uh, landscape uh, type paintings incorporating the entire uh, valley surround. Uh, it has been a, a great uh, area for me to develop painting, but not just painting alone, to develop the idea of where one might travel to paint to develop ideas about how to take on painting expeditions and it really is my spiritual base in Ireland from which I go forth to work. It really was a, a painting of the atmosphere. It was, a, it was a painting of the nature in Dysart, of its woodlands and of its flowers. It was, to me it was a happy painting, it was, uh, I was relaxed. Um, I didn't feel I was under any pressure. There's no due pressure on me working in Dyster because really I'm working for, for myself. I'm not working for, to exhibit it or to have it as a, an exhibition. Dysert, to me, is like a hermitage, the same as it was a hermitage for the old Anachorites. And I come here to rejuvenate and to paint in a relaxed form. Painting in this environment is totally different to going abroad in the sense that there's more time here. When you go on a, on, a, on a trip abroad, you have to actually produce a volume of work on a trip or else it becomes impractical.
when I go to a, a museum like this, I mean, I'm in search. I'm, I'm searching for something. I'm searching for information or I'm searching for something that's going to inspire me to create something. Sometimes it's just quite simply a, a, a composition. There's a fantastic collection of plesiosaurus in the Natural History Museum in London. Uh, there's a whole wall devoted to them. This particular creature could grow from anything from about four feet to about 36 feet. So they survived for about 50 million years. They were basically before the dinosaurs, they're pre-dinosaur. The particular one that I did a painting of was, was a, of a, a young uh, plesiosaurus. He would have lived about 200 million years ago. I used a very heavy watercolour paper. The paint is applied as pure colour. I especially like uh, doing this technique for fossil studies because it almost brings the fossil to life. So you have a sense of, although it's millions of years old, that it still has some form of life or there's still some vibration of life left in the fossil. This technique attempts to transmit life to stone. I did this painting in the middle of the afternoon and in so doing I became part of the museum myself. It was as if as I was also an exhibit. It's something which happens to me quite a lot because I do so many paintings in this environment but I don't get uh, influenced on Julie by their presence and I just get on with my working. Museums sometimes are actually a catalyst for me to uh, awaken my consciousness as regards man and the environment in which we live in. Man is a very, very, fr is very, very fragile in the whole ecosystem. We really are insignificant in the whole span of life. And if we wish to remain alive, we should pay much more heed to our environment. I was also very, very interested in the cave paintings, which are all along the coast of northern Spain, out by the Basque region into southern France. And these stretch back from maybe even 15, 20,000 years ago to about 5,000 years ago. On any of these trips that I take, I always like to 